Hey folks, in this short video, we are gonna look at our reciprocal identities and our quotient identities, which are our two most basic types of identities. And then we're gonna use those identities to simplify trigonometric expressions. And so the first question you're probably asking is, what is an identity? And an identity is, is an expression, it's a mathematical relationship that's always true regardless of the variables. And the first one that pops into my head that's very simple is x plus x is 2x. It doesn't matter what the value of x is, this is always a true relationship. And while this would be an algebraic identity, we're gonna look into trigonometric identities, trigonometric relationships that are always true. Now, when we defined our trigonometric ratios for use on the unit circle, we said sine theta equals y, because it's really y over r, but on the unit circle, r was one. And then we did the same thing with cosine, cosecant, secant, so on and so forth. I'm using the unit circle definitions or the unit circle representations of these relationships for a reason that you'll see in a minute. But what we know is that these were called our reciprocal functions because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, right? Well, here's what I want you to see. If sine theta equals y and cosecant equals one over y, couldn't I substitute sine theta in right here and write cosecant theta as one over sine theta? And therefore, secant theta could be one over cosine. And then keeping by the same idea, cotangent's the reciprocal of cotangent. And so I could represent any of these relationships this way. And then I could come back and represent my original trigonometric relationships as reciprocals as well. Sine theta is one over cosecant, cosine is one over secant, and tangent is one over cotangent. So these six right here, these are your reciprocal identities. I would write these down. I would put them in your notes. They're really important. But then our next thing is the quotient identities. And when we're thinking about the quotient identities, we think about how we've defined tangent. So we, so we know tangent can be represented as one over cotangent, but there's another identity that we're gonna use with tangent. If tangent's y over x, we already said that sine theta could be represented as y and cosine theta could be represented as x. So as a quotient, we could write tangent as sine theta over cosine theta. That's a quotient identity. This relationship's always true. We also know that cotangent, therefore, could be represented as cosine theta over sine theta. And so therefore, these two are gonna be our quotient identities. So we gotta keep in mind that I can represent tangent as this, but also tangent as this. And sometimes we're gonna use the reciprocal identities, sometimes we're gonna use the quotient identities, and it just takes a lot of practice to identify what you're gonna use when. Now that we've um, kind of derived our, what, eight reciprocal and quotient identities, let's do a couple of example problems. So our first example is we're gonna simplify this expression right here. And so I'm looking at it and, and what you're gonna, my, my, my tip, I guess, is that we wanna write all three of these trigonometric values relationships in terms of sine and cosine. Because I could write cosine as um, one over secant, but you'll see with practice that doesn't really help us. I could write tangent as one over cotangent. Where is that on here? But that doesn't really help us. Instead, let's write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So for example, it helps see it if I write my tan squared theta as this, as tangent of theta squared, because tangent of theta, our identity for that is that tangent is sine over cosine. And then lastly, our cosecant theta here, cosecant is gonna be one over sine. Now by doing this, let me, let me rewrite this middle fraction. So I have cosine squared theta times sine squared theta over cosine squared theta times one over sine theta. And now that we're here, cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta cancels. And then whenever I multiply what's left straight across, we have sine squared theta over sine theta. And then basically if I have, if my numerator is sine theta times sine theta or sine squared theta, and my denominator is sine theta, I can cancel our sine theta in the denominator with one of the sine thetas in the numerator, and you're left with just sine theta. This is the simplified form of this expression, and we used our quotient and reciprocal identities to do that. Let's move on to our second example. In example two, we've got this. 
Now, once again, I am going to rewrite all of these in terms of sine and cosine. That means I'm going to leave sine theta as it is. It's already written in terms of sine. But for this secant right here, I'm going to write secant as 1 over cosine. So my numerator will be 1 over cosine. And then tangent, my denominator right here, I could write as 1 over cotangent, but that's not really going to help us. It's more helpful to write tangent using our quotient identity of sine theta over cosine theta. Because now whenever I simplify the numerator, my numerator becomes sine theta over cosine theta, and my denominator becomes sine theta over cosine of theta. Now here, it might be kind of hard to see. I need to make that a little bit neater. But we have something over itself. Anytime you have something over itself, 5 over 5 is 1, 10 over 10 is 1, stuff over stuff is 1. So basically, this example right here, this big expression, simplifies down to a 1. And let's do our last example, example three. We've got this, we have one over tangent theta times cosine theta over sine theta. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent is sine theta over cosine theta. And then we've got times cosine theta over sine theta. Now there's a few different routes we could go on this one. Um, what I'm gonna do is if I have 1 over sine theta over cosine theta, I can simplify this because if I had, if I did some aside work over here, if I had like 1 over x over y, that's going to be equal to 1 times y over x. To divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. And so if I come back down here, this could be 1 times cosine theta over sine theta, so I just turn that into reciprocal, and one times anything is itself. And then I'll bring down cosine theta over sine theta. Now when we multiply straight across, you have cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. And I'm going to come up here so I have a little bit more operating room. You might already know what that is going to become. But if you're having a hard time seeing it, know that it might help to write it like this, cosine of theta over sine of theta squared. And then once you have that, we recognize, oh, well, cosine over sine, that's just going to be cotangent of theta, which in our final form, we'd write it like this. And that's our three.